Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making um, a cinnamon swirl bread in a, a Pullman loaf tin. That, this is what a Pullman loaf tin looks like. It has a, a lid that you can close so that it gives you just about a square loaf, um, four by four inches. And this particular one is 13 inches long. You can get them nine inches long. Um, and I'm going to be making this bread at this size so that later I can slice it and freeze slices in sort of pairs so that I have that cinnamon bread when I want it um, just easy to take out of the freezer and to toast. Uh, now for the ingredients um, for the bread I have uh, 560 grams of strong white bread flour you could use all-purpose flour, plain flour if you wanted to, but I'm using the bread flour. And I have uh, 50 grams of caster sugar. I have uh, 68 grams of beaten egg. What I did was uh, I cracked two large eggs into a bowl, whisked them together, took out 68 grams, and I put the remainder into another bowl here with a little bit of milk. I'll use that later on for the, with the filling. And then I have uh, seven grams of uh, active dry yeast. That's one packet of active dry yeast. And I have 56 grams, for four tablespoons of uh, softened butter. Or oh, I should say my 560 grams of uh, flour is about uh, four and one third to four and a half cups of flour. Then I have um, 110 millilitres of water, which is warm to uh, 43 degrees Celsius, 110 Fahrenheit. Uh, and that is uh, half a cup minus one dessert spoon. And I have 175 millilitres of milk uh, which is warm at 48 degrees Celsius, 120 Fahrenheit, and that's two thirds of a cup uh, plus one tablespoon. So the first thing to do is to put the yeast into the warm water with a little bit of sugar and stir that together and then let it uh, rest for sit for 10 minutes while it starts to activate. So I'm going to leave that to activate for 10 minutes and then I'll come back and we'll go on to the rest of the recipe. Uh, the yeast has activated uh, quite nicely as you can see. Um, it's quite frothy. So what I'm going to do, um, I have my whisk attachment uh, at the moment on my stand mixer and I'm going to pour in my warm milk and the softened butter. And the uh, beaten egg. And the uh, 50 grams of caster sugar together with the activated yeast and I'm just going to give that a quick whisk to get that all mixed together. So that's mixed together quite well. So I'm going to change over to my dough hook. And then I'm going to uh, start to knead in the flour. And for that, I'm going to add it um, 
in about three or four editions. So I'll just knead it until it's all coming together and then I'll add the next amount of flour. And then my third edition of flour can go in. And then I'm going to knead this on a medium speed until uh, the dough has all come together and it's come cleanly away from the bowl and it feels tacky to the touch. And I'll tell you how long that takes when I come back. So I've let that knead for about five minutes and it is just slightly tacky to the touch. It should come easily off my hook, which it does. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to just put that onto a very lightly floured work surface so I can form it into a ball and create a little bit of tension in it. And then we'll put that into a greased tin, a, a greased uh, bowl, should I say, sorry. I'll just take a little bit of flour and pull this out. over on itself like that a few times and I now have a nice ball of dough which I'm going to put into this uh, greased bowl. I'm going to put it in top side down first of all, and give it a quick twist around and then I'm going to turn it over. That's so that the top gets some oil on it so that it doesn't form a skin as it rises. And then I'm going to cover that and let it uh, prove uh, until it's doubled in size. Now it's quite hot in here today, so it may only take an hour, but it could take up to two hours. So I'll come back when it's proved and we'll go on to the next step. The dough has now risen to more than double in size, so it's ready to be rolled out. Um, so what I have um, is I have 100 grams of sugar, and I have, uh, which is uh, half a cup, and I have 20 grams of uh, ground cinnamon, which is uh, about eight teaspoons. And I also have one egg beaten, and I've added a little bit of milk into that as well. Uh, now, you could, if you wanted to, add some raisins into this, um, but I don't need the raisins for, for my purposes. But if you want to make it cinnamon and raisin, you can add some raisins in. Uh, so, uh, what I will do first of all is I'll put the sugar and the cinnamon into a bowl and then I'll give that a stir with a whisk just to get that all mixed together. And that's ready to then be um, sprinkled all over the dough. So, what we need to do is to take our dough and knock it down 
and tip it out onto the work surface which I've lightly floured again and I want to roll this out until it's um, slightly smaller than the width of my um, Pullman tin So I'll just roll it into as much like a square as I can because I think 13 inches will be enough for the um, oh in fact I've got it as an oblong it's more than 13 inches I can see that already um, but I will roll up from the short side to get our swirls in Actually, I think that's probably good enough. So it's not bad. And then what I'm going to do is to take my egg wash and I'm going to brush all over the surface. This is to help the sugar and the cinnamon stay in place as we roll it up good enough and then I'm going to sprinkle the sugar over and for that I'm going to use a tea strainer from experience I found that that works quite well I think that's good enough so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush this bottom edge with a little bit of the egg wash and then I'm going to start to roll that up as tightly as I can And as I go, I want to just gently brush it a bit more each time. If I think I need it.
and I'll pull, pull, should I say, not pull, pull the last bit over like that. And I'll check that width and that's just fine. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that so that I can see the seam and I'm going to squeeze the seam together all the way down. And I'm going to level the end and then tuck that in on itself like that and then with that like that I need to put that into my loaf tin so I will pick it up and drop it in then I'm going to push that down like that and then I'm going to cover it end with my lid like that and I'm going to leave that to rest until um, it's risen to within about half an inch of the top and uh, as it looks like it's doing that I would preheat my oven to 180 celsius that's 160 celsius with a fan 350 fahrenheit um, so then it's ready to go into the oven, but I'll come back and show it to you before I put it into the oven And I want to say at this stage that if you don't have a Pullman tin you can still do this um, in uh, a two pound loaf tin a nine by five or eight and a half by uh, five or whatever But it may rise it will, and then you want to let it rise in the tin covered until it comes up above the, the top level of the tin and it will bake into a, a sort of more bulbous loaf than this one will. Uh, but I'll be back with you when this is risen, ready to go into the oven. It's been uh, about 45 minutes actually, because um, it's very warm here. And as you can see, um, the dough has risen in the tin and it's just about half an inch away from the top. So I'm going to put that into my preheated oven and I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes. Then I'll take it out, remove the lid and let it cool down and I'll come back and show you the results. The cinnamon swirl Pullman loaf has now baked and it's cooled down. And uh, this is what it looks like. I've sliced it um, so you can see inside. Um, so it has quite a nice swirl to it. It baked for 45 minutes. Um, and then I took it out of the, the oven and took it straight out of the tin. Now I'm not going to taste it, um, but that's because uh, it's a bit late in the, the evening for that. Um, but it looks quite good and uh, I will have some tomorrow morning for toast. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you have, please give me the thumbs up below it and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there will be an eye that uh, you can click on which will take you to this recipe and I'll put a link below the video for it as well. And I'll be back with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.